Um, yeah, so well, thank you so much for coming tonight. Um, it's um, such a beautiful evening and I really appreciate that you've chosen to participate in, in our program. Really lovely to see you all. So uh, we're very pleased to have with us Allison Wood from Ocean Ambassadors and um, they are a local group that has been working to build awareness of the health of our oceans. And this is one program of many that the library is doing as part of Climate Future. So Climate Future is an initiative of the library that is addressing the climate emergency and um, we have lots of neat things happening. It, we have programs like this, information programs. We have bat boxes that have just gone in, a food garden. Uh, we've got a toolkit which gives people advice on how to reduce their own carbon footprint. Um, and I also want to mention that we are, more people coming in, that's great. Um, we're doing this program on the traditional ancestral and unceded territory of the Squamish, Tsleil-Waututh and Musqueam nations. And we're very grateful to be able to learn and play on this land and, and the oceans that have been there since time immemorial. So um, at this point, I am going to turn it over to Celine. Uh, she's with us with, for our kids who has partnered with us on this program. And she'll tell you a little bit about that organization. Thank you. Thank you so much, Lynn, and hi, everyone. Good to meet you virtually. Um, I'm here together with uh, Julia is, is there from uh, For Our Kids North Shore as well. And uh, we're super pleased to be partnering here with the uh, West Vancouver Library to, uh, to bring Alison um, here to you. And uh, a little bit about For Our Kids. Um, so this is a, a national organization of um, it's a network of parents and grandparents, and we have uh, chapters that are self-organized, um, very much run by volunteers, and uh, each chapter runs uh, what they feel is most helpful to really tackle uh, climate change in the area. So uh, what we've done on the on the North Shore at large, uh, a few pieces starting with meeting with our MLAs, asking for appointments and um, having correspondence with them on uh, a few topics um, from protection of the screeching owl um, to the logging of old growth. Um, we publish op-eds also. We've been published on the, the North Shore News a few times. We've been painting banners. Julia's family has been very awesome with that. Lots of social media to really raise awareness. Um, that's the, the starting point. And then um, really try and invite people to take action as well. Um, so we are a group of uh, six volunteers on the North Shore. And uh, we've been operating for about a year. And we've done quite a few things uh, since then. And uh, I recognize a few names here, and uh, we have uh, a little bit of uh, a following. If you'd like to know more about what uh, what we're doing, please take a look at the For Our Kids uh, website. I'll pop up the uh, the link in a bit, and you can also join in. Um, you'll have a button to say join in in there so that uh, we can send newsletter and you can stay up to speed with uh, what's going on and, and future events. Uh, June 28th, go take a look on the website. It's an event where we invite dads uh, to come and, and talk uh, with uh, a series about what can dads do to tackle climate change. So quite, uh, quite a few things. We keep busy. There's always things happening. Uh, Bill C12, with uh, really pushing for this to pass, is a, is a very big one at the moment for us. And of course, in BC, old growth. Um, halting of the, the logging of all growth is another big one. So that's going on. But uh, with that, we're here for Addison Wood and I'll pass it back to, uh, to Lynn to, uh, to do that introduction. Thank you. Thanks so much, Celine. And yes, for our kids, they're such a passionate group and it's neat to see there's some people from other chapters around the lower mainland here. That's great. So, um, I'd like to introduce Allison, Allison Wood. Um, Allison is one of the founders of Ocean Ambassadors and she founded it with her friend, Ben Wesanko. Um, and I mean, really it's about trying to connect people to the ocean. Um, Allison is a competitive stand-up paddler and a lifelong educator. And so bringing those two things together, education and love of the ocean, 
um, I think is what led her to be doing this kind of work. So I, ju I just wanna read this lovely quote um, that from Allison. So she says, the inspiration for Ocean Ambassadors came while well on my stand-up board in Deep Cove. The incredible beauty of the ocean was regularly contrasted with garbage floating on the water. We need to inspire people to protect our oceans. And to do that, we need to get people to the beach and onto the water to experience its magic. Great, thank you, Allison. Oh, thanks so much for having me. And um, so thanks so much to Celine and Julia for inviting me. And I really think that the connection between for our kids and Ocean Ambassadors is a perfect one because we're both um, about action. And I think um, at Ocean Ambassadors, we um, deal with a lot of young people who were trying to inspire to take action. And um, you are providing all of these venues for people to actually take that action. So one of the things that I've already made a note of while um, the introductions were happening was that um, we need to be sending people that come through Ocean Ambassadors to, to for our kids to, to get involved in all of these campaigns. So I'm just gonna share my screen. Can everybody still hear me okay? I just had a, your internet is unstable, that scary message. No, nope, we can hear you fine. Okay, good. That's always the worst, you know? <laughs> okay. Good, we are good, yay. Um, okay, well, so thank you. So I thought what um, we do tonight um, is I'm gonna tell you um, a little bit about um, what the idea of Ocean Ambassadors is, what we do, the different things that we do. Um, talk a, a little bit about the state of um, single-use plastics in Canada and then in BC and then municipally. Um, and I know a lot of you uh, were at the talk by Karen's story, so I can't, um, I cannot hold the candle to her knowledge about single-use plastics, and I think you've, you've got it all from her. Um, so we'll just um, talk about uh, a couple of issues around that. Um, and then um, I wanted to touch on marine protected areas, as well as um, the issue of overfishing, um, and then talk really about how we can all work together um, to get involved and um, to make a difference with these things. So we will have time um, at the end of my presentation for questions. Um, so as we're going, if um, you wanna think of questions um, during the presentation, that would be great uh, for at the end and then I will do my best to answer them. And if I don't know the answer, I'm happy to, um, to find answers and then share them with you afterwards. So when we look at um, plastics and really um, when Ocean Ambassadors started, it was um, the first issue we thought about was marine plastics or marine waste. Um, so right now, the latest stats are that in Canada every year we throw away 3 million tons of plastic and only 9% is recycled. So what really hits home for me is that, wow, just 9%. And we hear about all of these recycling programs and it's so great you can recycle soft plastic bags at London Drugs and all of these things, but wow, 9%. So there's something about recycling that isn't working. Um, and, and one of the messages of Ocean Ambassadors is we really need to kind of rethink this whole recycling as being um, an, answer, an answer to things. So we'll get into that a little bit more. Um, so our Canada's um, pr uh, federal goal is to have zero plastic waste by 2030. Um, so that's a very ambitious goal. Um, and um, in October 2020, Canada announced six single-use items that they would um, that they were would phase out. Um, and the timing, the timing is a little bit ambiguous. So they're really kind of straightforward things. So plastic grocery bags, straws, stir, stir sticks, the six pack rings, cutlery and foodware made from hard to recycle plastics. That just means styrofoam is what they're saying there. Um, so those are all pretty like low, low bar kind of things that, that the federal government is aiming for. And unfortunately, um, there was quite a lot of celebration when that came out last fall. 
And unfortunately, what happened was when, when the federal um, government met with the provinces and the municipalities, it turned out that the federal government's, um, their mandate was actually to defer to provinces and municipalities and not to override any of them. So in all of the meetings between the municipalities and the, and the provinces, it really turned out that this big announcement in 2020 hasn't been the panacea that we thought it would. And in fact, it's still coming down to the provinces and the municipalities. So in BC right now, um, our um, environment minister, George Heyman, is actually taking action um, by approving municipal bans. So they need to be, um, municipalities need to have the approval of the province for this. Um, so they're actually doing that now, which is, um, is quite impressive. So um, the sort of most common one that people have heard of is uh, Victoria's plastic bag ban. They introduced a plastic bag ban, I think in 2018. And then it was challenged by the plastic bag industry. And it ended up that um, going to court and to the Supreme Court. And it really is like, you know, big tobacco, almost big oil, the plastic industry um, fighting for that. Um, so just in April 20, on April 21st of this year, Victoria um, re-implemented their plastic bag ban and um, it seems to be going well so far, which is exciting. So the four other municipalities are um, yeah, Nanaimo, Esquimalt, um, what else, do I have another one there? Whoops, sorry. Uh, and, and what was, sorry, I can't see what the other one was in my, you guys are showing. Um, but yeah, so the municipalities oh. are, oh, thank you. Yeah, so the municipalities are actually, um, Smithers, yeah, are actually coming um, on board, which is really exciting. So I just wanted to give you a little bit of a background of the story of what's happening um, with all of these. And it seems like it should be so simple. So for example, in, um, in 2018, some people that are on this call may have been involved in the letter writing campaign for the District of North Vancouver. Is anybody on this call that whose kids wrote letters for them? So that was a, a really big success and, and the District of North Vancouver in, um, announced that they were going to uh, try to go forward with this legislation and it, it was stalled by all of this confusion between the different uh, jurisdictions. So that's just kind of like a background um, for uh, Ocean Ambassadors. So um, Ocean Ambassadors started in 2017 and we're um, a charity, a federal charity. And our mission is to connect people with the ocean, to educate them around the ocean and then really to inspire them to take action. So um, as Lynn mentioned, I started it with a friend of mine's really a passion project. I wanted to do it for a really long time. Um, and the idea is that um, without a connection to nature, um, we don't believe that we can have that affective change where we're really changing people's feelings about something. Um, and the whole idea of the Jacques Cousteau, we protect what we love. So that's our, our basis is to get people to the ocean and to the beach. And we use stand up paddling to, to get them on the ocean. Um, and then we do workshops on the beach where we do really hands-on experiments around a lot around um, plastics in the ocean, as well as different um, other pollutants in the ocean. So this group that you see here, they're um, doing an experiment about the water column, looking at the densities of plastic and how plastics may float at one point, but then once organisms start to live on them, their density increases and they may be found anywhere within the water column. And then they look at different plastics that's, that sink and float and, and the effect on the ocean. Uh, this is another uh, little experiment we do um, around biomagnification. So how um, plastic, bits of plastic um, and other pollutants um, are attracted to each other. And it, so when we're dealing with sea, um, different sea creatures eating plastic, 
it's not just the plastic, but it could be oil, it could be um, bits of fertilizer, pesticides that are attached to that plastic. And what is that doing to the food chains um, all through the ocean and then also to humans? And the research on that is still um, very new. and We're not sure about the effect on humans, but it'll be interesting to see in the next few years what comes of that. So it's just another shot of our groups on the beach. Um, and we do, one of um, my favorite activities um, that, that we do is we look, we try to look at not only what kids in our programs can do right now. So these kids here are actually in grade 10 um, and we do programs for grade two um, all the way up to grade 12 with most of them being in the grade six to eight range. Um, and um, one of the things that we wanna do is, is really engage them and inspire to take action, not just now, but to consider careers in protecting the ocean. So the activity that these um, kids are working on is we imagine that it's um, 2051 and it's the World Ocean Summit in 2051. So they'll be 30 years older. So we get them to imagine, okay, so 30 years from now, okay, you go to this World Ocean Summit and then we say, well, who's at the summit? Well, there's politicians and there's scientists and there's business people. And then we get them in small groups to decide who they want to be at the summit. And then we say in 10 minutes, you're going to announce what you've done that's solved the, the problem of plastics in our ocean. And so they just have to think really out of the box crazy. Um, and then they come up with something and then they present it to the group. And the whole idea is to encourage creativity. And then we talk about how most of the world's big problems really were solved by somebody's out of the box crazy idea. So we talk about hanging on to your creativity and then we talk about different careers in the ocean. So marine biology, um, you know, we're looking for a um, materials engineer who can create some kind of a, a, a um, product that is as good as plastic in, in all of those ways, but maybe it's good for fish, something like that. So all of, we talk about all different ideas. And so these are some of the things that, uh, this is a grade six class. So they come up with what they could do individually, what they could do at their school, and then what they could do in their community um, themselves at their age right now um, to take action. So the whole idea of being ocean ambassadors. And that was actually taken on Bowen Island. We do some programs in Bowen Island. So here's some more kids uh, presenting and it's all done in a really fun way. And everything we do is at the beach. This is another one I just wanted to show you for fun. So this is somebody, they're gonna have a blimp, which is the thing up high. And they're gonna have hot air going down one side and cold air going down the other side. And so the hot and cold air are gonna mix in the ocean, and then they're gonna have a contraption that's gonna capture all the plastic in the ocean. So just really sort of wild ideas that they're coming up with. And just another shot of them presenting. And then the idea, the, the water part of the, the sessions, this is at Ambleside Beach, um, is we teach them how to stand up paddle. So we give them a proper paddle lesson, and then we get them out on the ocean. And we find a lot of kids um, haven't been on the ocean stand up paddling. Many kids haven't been swimming in the ocean. And some kids all, in almost every class, there'll be one or two kids who may be new to Canada um, or some kids that where kids just don't live near the ocean where they've never been to the beach. So that's really rewarding. And when we started Ocean Ambassadors, we really started with the idea of providing opportunities, mostly for kids that couldn't afford or for whatever reason, they didn't have the opportunity to experience the beach. Um, and we hope with ocean, as we develop Ocean Ambassadors um, that we'll be able to offer more programs um, through help, through uh, sponsorships and things. And we do some through Return It. They sponsor us to do five schools every year um, where the kids don't have to pay. And those are just so rewarding to, to provide opportunities for kids to get to the beach. And we really talk about ownership of their beach. There, they're out on the water. So we teach them proper paddling. 
And then we quickly move from that to jumping in the water. You can see this kid here has been jumping in the water and we do cannonballs and we do yoga until everybody falls off. It's usually tree pose that makes them fall off. There we go, some yoga. Uh, just a group at the end of the day. Excellent. So um, with Ocean Ambassadors, we do our school programs and we also do summer camps. And um, the education portion has really evolved. So as I mentioned, when we started, we started just talking about plastics in the ocean and at a very simple level, and that was four years ago. And it's so impressive how the conversation and, and the level of knowledge in the community has grown in that time. It's incredible. So we evolve our programs every year and we have um, actually a marine biologist who works with us and helps us develop the programs. Um, and it is incredible the knowledge that the kids come in with. And we always um, make sure that we're at the front edge of, of that knowledge. So um, really, um, I think impressive what, what we're doing um, as far as education ar around pollution in the ocean. So we do kids programs and then we also do um, a lot of community initiatives. So some of you may um, be aware of um, Horseshoe Bay went plastic bag free uh, in 2019. And we as ocean ambassadors worked with Horseshoe Bay and we also worked with Deep Cove in 2018 went plastic straw free. And then finally, Edgemont Village, uh, just before COVID started in February 2020, um, we got almost every business in Edgemont Village to stop using single-use plastic carryout bags. Um, and the idea of that work was to work with small business communities and then to engage the community, the shoppers, um, by having volunteer pop-up tents in the, in the neighborhood. So kind of working with the businesses and with the the consumers to come up with with something. And so uh, we just before COVID, we actually had a big event where we had 240 people come to um, the church at in Edgemont Village, the United Church and celebrate and Jonathan Wilkinson came, which is amazing. It's in his neighborhood um, uh, to celebrate that. And so um, those actions we started working on um, with the idea that it the governments take a really long time to take action. And so it's really important for um, to be the letter writing campaigns, to be meeting with the politicians. And then we feel to support that we need to be acting, um, taking action like immediately um, to support that, that going forward. Um, and the, the uh, other things that uh, we're up to is we offer some uh, programs. We've started offering some programs for um, small business coaching. So what we're doing with the help of Van City is we're actually going to small businesses and providing zero waste coaching in a very easy and formal way for them to do it. So we go to a lot of cafes and restaurants. We're working on the North Shore right now. And we just do a very simple, quick audit of all of their single use items that they're using and provide a report with suggestions of what they might use that's more sustainable. So the classic one being they're using compostables and you talked about with Karen's story that that's actually less sustainable right now. So going in and just, and helping them with suggestions of how they can become more sustainable. So that's been quite successful. So we've done and made differences in 73 businesses on the North shore to date. So we're about, uh, and we're hoping to have 110 businesses is our goal. So those are kind of the main things that, that we're up to with Ocean Ambassadors. And so I just wanted to talk a little bit about, so we talked about plastic and, and you've um, spoken um, with Karen's story, which is amazing. Um, so I just wanted to kind of a quick overview of what are the, what are the big threats to the ocean? And then um, to zero in on, um, overfishing, uh, and then talk about marine protected areas. Um, so overfishing, irresponsible fish farming, uh, ghost fishing, uh, marine waste or garbage, acidification, dead zones, mercury pollution, and then the warming of the ocean. So um, 
when we talk about people getting engaged, and I think for Celine and, and Julie, I think one kind of neat opportunity might for us to be work together and find um, maybe a couple of these where there could be action taken with um, with working with governments and, and letter writing campaigns or, wh or whatever they might be um, and working together on those might be really fun and according to what pe people are interested in. Okay, um, just I wanna talk a little bit about um, overfishing or fishing. So, um, you know, fishing, fish being the number one source of protein um, for over a billion people in the world. So amazing and one of the, one of the um, things that came out in uh, the movie Sea Spiracy, which I'm sure some of you have watched, was was kind of the message that you know we should just not eat seafood, and that's very easy and privileged for us to say that when um, a lot of people in the world actually depend on seafood for 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 their protein. So we know uh, right now that. Um, uh, overfishing really affects the animals at the top of the food chain. So when we start to wipe out the whales and the sharks and the tuna um, and the big fish, then it affects everything down the food chain um, even greater. And so that's one of the, one of the big issues is uh, the overfishing of these, these big, big fish. Um, and as a lot of you are, I'm sure aware, um, the problem of overfishing is very much related to um, the high seas or international waters. So countries only have um, control or are able to control what happens within their, their boundaries. And so when you get to 200 kilometers off any coast, it's international waters or what's called the high seas. And that really is there, nobody owns it. There is no, no way for anybody to stop anything from happening. And that's the cause of a lot of um, overfishing right now. And um, there's a, there is a lot of, um, of fishing that's taking place that where people are fishing um, without their, their electronic devices on. And um, it is really kind of the wild west. So, um, there are organizations that are tracking through satellites because um, everybody has a GPS and if they have it on or even on the boat, it'll be able to track where they are. So there, there's people that are actually taking them off and then they're just out without it. But people are now using just the lights that they have on their fishing boats to track them and, and to try and um, catch them when they go back to their home port. So very difficult problem to solve. And, um, the United Nations um, has looked at actually, or is trying to, to grapple with how do we solve this problem? Like how do we make it so that the world could police the high seas? So a really, really big problem. Um, which brings us to marine protected areas. And I just wanna skip forward here. And I wanna show you, uh, this is a map of Canada. So right now Canada has our 6% of our coastal waters are marine protected areas, which means that for whatever reason, there's, um, there, there are areas of significance. So for example, right near us, we have um, these amazing glass sponges. They're, they're actually a coral um, off of our coast. So in the marine protected areas, um, there, there's limited, so there's no shellfish fishing, and there's no anchoring, um, and, and often there's actually no fishing in the in different, and it depends on the area. Um, so very powerful when they work. And in Canada, we're actually not too bad, um, at least in the southern marine protected areas, we're quite good at, at um, policing those. But around the world, it's not the same situation at all. So there are many, many areas of the world where there are lots of marine protected areas, but in reality, there's, there's not much being protected. They're still being, uh, being abused, those areas. Um, so our goal is to have 30%, Canada, 30% of, of our marine, uh, our coastal waters protected by um, 
2030. So we say 30 by 30. So that's actually land and water. Uh, we're at 6% right now. And um, the, the plan is in place, with the federal government to move up to that. So it's going to be 25 by 25, I think. And the federal government is just about to make a big announcement around marine protected areas. They were trying to have it ready for um, World Oceans Day on June 8th, but uh, I guess something happened. It wasn't quite ready. Let's go back up here. Um, so when we talk about um, marine uh, protected areas, um, it is a really great way for us to start protecting habitats and to start restoring fish stocks that have been depleted. Um, and in Canada, we actually do have um, a really great sort of system and, and the Department of Fisheries and Oceans creating, uh, mapping out the areas that need to be protected. So I'm actually really hopeful about marine protected areas in Canada and internationally it, it's harder, but uh, it's, it, it is uh, on everybody's radar. Um, so yeah, so 64% of, of the ocean is not in anybody's jurisdiction. So that's that high seas that we talked about. Um, and I, th I think um, another uh, sort of really interesting uh, stat that nobody thinks about is that 50% of the Earth's oxygen, and we often hear, yeah, 50% every second breath comes from the ocean. You've probably heard that. But I think it's so cool that it's from the ocean's phytoplankton, which are just these tiny, tiny animals that live in, in the ocean. So, so cool that uh, it's from these little, little creatures that, that we get every second breath. Um, and the, the impact of when we do have these marine protected areas is, um, they just chose a thousand percent, I think. It's just astronomical, so it can go, um, populations can thrive to the point that, that we have to then get them back to some kind of um, a balance. So super, super effective marine protected areas. And there are organizations um, in BC um, that, that focus on marine protected areas. The David Suzuki Foundation is one of them. So um, what can we do as members of For Our Kids or interested parties or ocean ambassadors? Um, so um, we can work to affect policy. So I think For Our Kids sounds like you're doing a really great job of that. Ocean Ambassadors currently has a letter writing campaign to Minister Wilkinson, our federal environment minister, to encourage him to um, make, um, the, make climate change a priority, uh, a higher priority for Canada and to take more bold action. We can uh, educate ourselves and our kids. And um, I think, um, our friends is a really big one as well. So having those conversations with our friends and family, we can act individually. And um, I don't know if Karen's story um, said in her talk, but uh, I really think her, her line of, you know, what I do doesn't make a difference said 2 million people, right? So if we all do make those individual changes, so if we, we don't get that coffee in the, in the um, single use cup and all of us start doing that, that, that actually can have a huge impact. Um, and then inspire groups and communities to take action. So Sylvia Earle is kind of my hero. So she, you may have heard of her. She's uh, one of the world's best known marine biologists. And I actually got to go to the World Ocean Summit in 2019 in Mexico and I met her and she's just incredible. She's like four and a half feet tall and very small. And this powerful, like, like the most powerful person in the room, just this incredible woman. And um, this quote really, um, I think sums it up uh, for what we need to be doing now and the taking action. So our actions over the next 10 years will determine the state of the ocean for the next 10,000 years. So putting that time limit on it really is like, okay, we, we really need, need to take action. <laughs>